My name is Connor A. Smith. Uh, I'll assume that we're good to go. Um, and yeah, I am the content director here at Cameron Baxter, and I'm just so excited to have y'all here and Eugene here for today's wonderful conversation on grant writing uh, that we have uh, partnered with Full Spectrum Features to present to y'all and to our Chicago community. Uh, a big reason we're doing this talk is because uh, community uh, or Cameron Ambassador has our own community builders grant that will be going live in just a couple of days. Uh, that exact application window is actually going to be uh, pull up our fancy logo, March 1st through the 30, 31st. And yeah, we're actually going to be hosting an info session with grant director and uh, Karen Ambassador co-founder Erica Duffy on March 3rd. And for any other information that you might have about the grant or direct questions you'd like to ask, um, oh, wait, hold that poster for y'all. Here we go. Here's our poster for that. There's a link in the top of the chat that you can go ahead and follow uh, and register for that event today. It'll be a live stream event where you can ask Erica directly uh, any questions you have about the Community Builders Grant, uh, any specific questions about maybe applying some of the knowledge you learned today to our specific grant. Um, or anything and everything. But enough about that. Um, without further ado, we'll just jump right into today's talk um, with a little bit of an introduction uh, for Eugene. Eugene is a filmmaker and producer working in narrative and experimental forms. His films have screened at over 400 festivals, micro cinemas, museums, and alternative screening venues around the world, including South by Southwest, BAM Cinema Fest, Outfest, Frameline, Chicago International, Cleveland International, Chicago Underground, Athens International, and Antimatter. His feature like script, Michael's Story, won the screenplay competition at the 30, 37th Asian American International Film Festival in New York. Eugene is the 2020, uh, the 2020 Community Impact Scholar of the Harvard Business School Alumni Co uh, Club of Chicago, and he was the 2019 recipient of the Jane and Frank Cicero Fellowship at the Newberry Library. Described by New City as the essential to the film uh, world of Chicago, Eugene was recently inducted to the magazine's inaugural Film 50 Hall of Fame. And specifically pertinent to today's uh, presentation, he has helped secure over $1 million in grants. Um, and without further ado, uh, let's just jump into today's conversation. Let me bring on Eugene. Great. Thank you, Connor. Hey, everyone. Uh, I can't see your faces, but I see we have about 20 some odd people here. So thank you for coming uh, on Saturday morning. Um, yeah, I'm going to do about 45 minute presentation and then uh, switch it over to uh, questions and discussion. Um, so I have this slideshow. Let me just, uh, okay. Um, yeah, so despite what the title was in the promotional materials or on Eventbrite, uh, I, I titled the slideshow Grant Building. And if uh, if ever talked with me about grants, I actually think about um, the whole process as a process of building grants as opposed to writing. And I think that framing really helps you uh, think a little bit differently about what it is that you're doing. So um, I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, I kind of wanted to uh, kick off with really what I think the three big takeaways are. I'm going to throw a lot of information at you today, but uh, if you get nothing else out of this uh, presentation, probably if you just get these three points, I, th I think you got uh, probably the three main important points. Um, so one of the first things uh, is as you're doing grants, uh, it's really important as obvious as this sounds that you follow instructions really precisely. Um, so if you're not sure about something, literally call, pick up the phone and call the funder or email them and ask them your specific questions. I have seen so many filmmakers or my staff spin themselves around in circles trying to interpret the grant instructions and applications that are sometimes written ambiguously as if it's some kind of like hieroglyphic document. Just don't guess, don't assume anything. Just call them and ask a human being. Um, another key takeaway is uh, it's kind of shocking and surprising to a lot of people to hear, but most funders and grant reviewers are not primarily or exclusively making their decisions based uh, on the basis of artistic merit. 
and I'll get into in a little while why that's relevant. But um, as much as we would like to think that a funder is generally going to give us a grant because they think that the the idea we have or the movie we have is awesome, um, that's certainly part of it. But that's not the entirety of it, and in many cases, that's only a small portion of it. Uh, and then the last one is really important is uh, you always, always ask for feedback when you get rejected and you will get rejected a lot. And if you don't ask for feedback, uh, grant writing turns into a process of buying lottery tickets where you just throw it in, see what happens, don't get it and move on. Uh, if you ask for feedback, you are initiating a conversation with the funder uh, and actually starting to build a relationship with them. Um, and that, it's going to set you up for success, both with that funder in the future, but also any other grant applications. Because usually when you get feedback, the funder will provide um, some details that maybe you hadn't thought about. And you'll realize, oh, I can see my budget wasn't that great, or my um, project description was, say, really vague, or um, something about the application didn't click with them. And then you can make some adjustments accordingly. Okay, and then this next couple of slides, I'm just going to go through some really definitions and distinctions. And I think it's important that we're working uh, as you're working on grants and as we move into the, the Q&A and have a discussion that we're working with the same vocabulary. So one of the really big things that I want to start out with is um, I hear a lot of filmmakers conflate donor and investor, meaning they use the two terms interchangeably. Um, and are effectively misusing them. And there's huge, huge legal distinction between these things, many other distinctions, and they're not the same thing. Uh, maybe from your perspective as a filmmaker, you're just asking both types of people for money. So in that sense, they kind of collapse into the same thing from a certain perspective, but they are fundamentally different things. And it's absolutely crucial that you understand the difference um, and, and speak uh, accurately and clearly when using these terms. Uh, and that distinction between donors and investors kind of tracks with another distinction that I want to make, which is between soft money and I guess you could call it, I think some people call it hard money. And soft money are things like grants and donations. And here's some, some of the features of soft money. So when you get a grant or a donation, there's no expectation of repayment. Uh, so you get a grant from the city or camera ambassador. You don't have to pay that money back to camera ambassador. Uh, that's your money to keep for your project. Uh, receiving that money does not require you to do any kind of fancy registration with a state or federal agency. It's just between you and the grantor. Um, generally, it's not going to require any kind of complex or specialized legal paperwork. You're not going to have to hire a lawyer to do all kinds of crazy stuff with contracts, uh, with donations and grants. It's often a single contract or piece of paper. Um, there's one exception, which I could talk about during the Q&A, which is the process of fiscal sponsorship. Uh, but even that is not too complex. Uh, one of the other nice features about soft money is there's a clear alignment of purpose and values. The person giving you the money um, has the same purpose and underlying set of values that you have with respect to the project. Um, and I can talk a little bit later about why that's important. But uh, generally, when you are receiving money from someone, it goes better when um, they have the same values and th they have the same underlying purpose for why they're transferring that money to you. And then, uh, yeah, the last uh, feature I want to highlight about soft money is that typically, besides making your movie, you have few, if any, additional obligations to the funder. Sometimes you have to do like a report or something like that, but um, there's really not much, um, what's the word? Uh, there's, there's no like hidden agenda or anything. Um, it, it's pretty much, they give you the money, go make your movie. Okay, so then I wanna distinguish soft money from hard money and uh, what I'm specifically talking about is uh, equity investment. And this is a completely different set of characteristics and features. So when you receive money from an investor, they have a legally binding claim to recoupment of that investment, usually plus a premium of uh, like 20% on, 
of all revenues that come in from that movie. Um, in order to do this, you can't just go around and ask someone to invest. Uh, you have to do a whole bunch of legal and business setup that'll cost anywhere from ten dollars to $20,000 um, to get everything properly registered and signed up. Uh, also, this whole process of receiving equity investment means your legal and business uh, entity must conform to state and federal laws regarding the solicitation of high-risk investments. Um, for instance, you need to register with the Securities and Exchange Commission, which is a whole process. Uh, independent films are extremely high-risk ventures. So, uh, yeah, you can't just go around and ask people to, to write you checks. There's a whole legal process and that process varies from state to state it can get really complicated if you're getting money for someone in new york sending uh money to um, an llc for a movie set up in a different state and then the last note on equity investments is there's often a whole set of uh, intangible and highly unpredictable obligations that you might uh, incur uh, unknowingly um, and this is everything from a quote unquote executive producer writing you a check on the condition that you put their niece in the movie or suddenly that investor wants to have a lot of say in um, the final edit or who you cast in the movie. Um, so there are other things that pop up with equity investors that you typically don't have to deal with when you're dealing with grants or soft money. Okay, so we'll go through a couple more uh, helpful distinctions. So. In the world of grants, um, one way to think about it is there are individual artist grants. So those are grants that are awarded to you directly as a person. You get uh, the check, you put it into your personal account, you go make your movie. And then NFP stands for not-for-profit or nonprofit grants. And those are grants that cannot be awarded to an individual person. They have to be awarded and administered through uh, a 501c3 nonprofit. And just to give you a little sense of the difference between the two beyond just um, the formal difference, there's uh, a huge difference in terms of the number of grants that are out there and the size of those grants. So when you talk about individual artist grants, um, they tend to be on the smaller side. There's some medium sized ones, but they tend to be smaller. So one organization that um, I've helped get a grant from for a, a individual filmmaker is the Awesome Foundation. Uh, it's a $1,000 grant. You know, it's, I'm not going to sneeze at $1,000, but when you're making a half million dollar movie or even a $50,000 movie, that's kind of a drop in the bucket. Um, Puffin Foundation is another, uh, I think they're based in New Jersey. Their average grant size is like uh, $1,200 with a maximum award of $2,500. Uh, the next two are the state and city arts councils, Illinois Arts Council and the Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events. That's the uh, city of Chicago's um, like arts agency. And the, they do run individual artist grants um, that are, again, not uh, insignificant amounts, but not huge. Uh, the next one is the Chicago Digital Media Protection production fund that Chicago filmmakers runs. It's a $20,000 grant. And then on the bigger end for individual artist grants is um, Creative Capital, which I believe is a New York based organization. And, and I believe their awards are, are around $50,000. Uh, so if you look to the kinds of grants that are available for nonprofits, we're talking completely different size here. So on the smaller end, Illinois Humanities is an agency. Again, they don't make awards to individuals. You as an individual person um, cannot apply. Um, uh, you cannot apply uh, to the grant uh, as an individual. Uh, only nonprofits can apply. Um, the Joyce uh, Foundation is another local funder. Again, um, you can't apply directly as an individual. Only nonprofits can get the award, and that's uh, up to seventy-five thousand. And these next three are federal grants. So there's the National Endowment for the Arts, the National Park Service, and the National Endowment for the Humanities. So you can see the project grants are um, quite like uh, quite a bit larger than the individual 
artist grants. The Nash, the last one, the National Endowment for the Humanities, actually um, uh, makes awards. Um, they have some special awards that are up to a million dollars. Uh, so if you're looking for grants for movies and because movies are so expensive, uh, you should probably do both of these types of grants. But you can see if you start uh, looking for nonprofit grants, you're going to be able to get uh, a much more significant amount of money. OK, now another distinction to make is there are grants that are specific to films and then there's a whole other category of grants that are not specific to film. And as you would imagine, the, uh, the film ones, especially if you're working in narrative film, and I, and I should um, uh, uh, add a quick side note here. My experience is mostly in narrative film and then to a lesser extent, experimental um, or video art. Um, I have never applied, uh, well, I shouldn't say never, but generally I don't work in documentary film and there's a, kind of a different funding landscape there. Uh, but there's there's still a lot of overlap. Uh, when we're looking at film specific grants, um, there's I think they tend to fall into like three different buckets or categories. So there's private companies, like Camera Ambassador, for instance, where they make uh, a film grant. It's not a grant for the arts generally; it's just for film. Um, private foundations. There's a handful of them that do offer uh, film specific grants. One example is the Ford Foundation. They have something called Just Films. It's built into the name. It's a fund just for films. Um, and then one thing that's kind of maybe shocking um, but disappointing is, as far as I know, there are no public funders who have a film specific grant in America. There are funds in other countries, in Canada, in Mexico, in France, where there's public funding, like government funding that is film specific. But as far as I know, in the United States, there's a grand total of zero dollars that's available to you as an independent filmmaker um, that's film specific. There are general arts grants that you and, and that film is a part of, but in, anything that is uh, specific to film, um, I don't think anything like that exists in this country. Now, if you switch to non-film grants, so that's just a general arts grant, a humanities grant, um, educational grants, uh, there's a lot more money and there's a lot more opportunities. And uh, I tend to think of these in several buckets again. So there's private foundations um, and again, there's a pretty wide range of the size of grants, but they get, they start to get pretty big. Uh, there's federal government grants. So DOE stands for Department of Education. Uh, there's National Park Service, uh, National Endowment for the Humanities. And these are, these tend to be like a quarter million dollars and up. Um, and then there's also, uh, local government, state, city government grants that, are not film specific and they can range from a couple thousand dollars to uh, six figures. Okay, and then I, um, apologies, I was fumbling around with a Google slideshow or whatever it's called this morning. So uh, I, don't, I didn't make the most elegant graphics, but I wanted to try to visualize this uh, distinction. So the big circle is kind of the world of arts grants. And within that world, there's a s smaller subsection um, that are film grants. And then even within that, there's a smaller subsection that's narrative. Uh, so what I'm trying to show here is like, there's a lot of money out there for arts grants uh, that has nothing to do with film. And then even within the world of film funding for grants, um, a smaller, much smaller portion of that. Uh, is allocated for narrative film. As I mentioned, um, there's more money and more opportunities for documentary filmmakers in the grant space. Um, so just the, hopefully, hopefully this gives you some perspective uh, of the, kind of the, the pot of money that's out there. And then uh, I wanted to also put that last uh, kind of, um, what was that called? Venn diagram into perspective and kind of pull it into here. So that big circle that I just showed you of arts grants, when we zoom out and look at the much larger grant land landscape, it's a drop in the bucket. Uh, it's like 1% of grant funding 
goes to the arts. And then if you uh, conjure in your mind that last slide that I had, there's a tiny little dot that represents uh, grants for narrative films. So we're talking about a really small amount of money. Um, and what I'm going to talk about, and uh, I can elaborate more during the discussion, um, is I want to encourage people to try to get funding from all of these different sources rather than focusing on just that one little dot because you're really limiting um, the possibilities if you're just going after money in that tiny, tiny little sliver. Okay. So here's um, some more sort of subcategories within these two broader categories of film grants versus non-film grants. So within the world of film grants, you're looking at uh, grants that fund narrative films or documentaries, sometimes they're both. Um, there's some grants that uh, fund shorts, uh, but not features. There's some that fund features, but not shorts. So you're gonna wanna make sure that uh, you're reading the eligibility requirements very carefully. Uh, there's some film grants that are identity-based, like there's a new one that um, uh, New Fest in New York is doing, I think in partnership with, uh, um, I wanna say it's maybe Netflix. It's like a 30 or $50,000 grant. And that's uh, New Fest, if you're familiar with that, is a, a queer film festival in New York. So that's um, an ident identity-based uh, grant. Uh, you also want to make note of dis distinctions between cash grants and in-kind grants. So the one that Connor mentioned, the camera ambassador one, I understand that that's a hybrid. So there's a cash component to it. I think it's like $3,000. Um, and then there's an in-kind component to it, which is a gear rental credit. And, and in-kind basically means uh, you get something of value, uh, not cash, but you get something that has... Um, uh, cash value to it that is valuable and useful for your project. And in this case, uh, like a camera package. Uh, and then the last thing to be thinking about when you're looking for film grants is there are um, just sort of straightforward grants where you uh, apply with a project and then if you get it, they send you money. But then there's also fellowships, which can be really useful where you're getting, um, you're en entering into a whole process. So I'm thinking about like the Sundance Screenwriters Lab, or one of the programs that we run for, for uh, as an example, which is the um, Chicago Independent Producers Lab, where you get some cash, but the real value of it is nine months of mentorship and helping to develop your project. So as you're looking at the grant land landscape, I definitely encourage you to look at fellowships too, because uh, that can be in the long term more conducive to raising money for your film than just chasing after small one, three, five thousand dollar grants. Okay, uh, on the non-film grant side, so this is where that bucket starts getting much larger and you start seeing a lot more money from a lot more different sources. Um, so there's general arts grants and sometimes um, a film is included in that, but then some of those, like, D case is a good example. Um, their artist grant is not just for film, it's for anyone who works in any arts medium. So. Um, that's one class of non-film specific grants. Um, there's subject matter specific grants that have nothing really to do with film, but they're uh, maybe a foundation, um, say, is doing advocacy work around immigration. And they may have a grant program for initiatives that uh, raise awareness around um, uh, challenges that immigrants are facing in the United States. Uh, your film project may be something they'd be interested in funding, even if you look on their website and the word film doesn't appear anywhere on their website. And their interest would be not so much in you or your project uh, as a film or as a filmmaker, but their interest would be in the topic of immigration. Um, there's also non-film identity-based grants. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's educational grants. Uh, there's economic development and workforce development grants that um, we've uh, obtained to help support some of the films that we've done. And then there's also uh, geographically specific grants um, that have to you know, do with the city, state, or 
a certain region of the country and they're not necessarily um, set up to support film, but really about supporting economic development or artistic activity, activity in a certain region. Okay, so a bunch of uh, grant writing do's and don'ts. Um, do talk to the funder before you apply. Again, as I was saying in the sort of opening, the three key takeaways, um, call the funder or email them. Um, don't just stare at a piece of paper at the website, like actually initiate a conversation with the funder. Um, part of doing that or a first step towards that is attending an info session and then you can find out who you need to talk to in addition to the details uh, for that specific grant. Um, do have someone else proofread your essay. Uh, you're not doing yourself any favors if your essay is uh, unclear or riddled with typos. Um, and yeah, it's just always a good idea to have someone else proofread everything before you submit it. Um, do put together a realistic budget and timeline. Uh, as a grant reviewer, I've seen many strong proposals that lack uh, a realistic budget and timeline and that can often tank the application. Uh, and as I mentioned at the outset, oh, do ask for feedback if you don't get the grant. Uh, in some ways, the feedback you get could be more valuable than uh, whatever grant you could have gotten. And then another um, uh, tip I have that uh, falls in the do category is, which is somewhat surprising to people, is uh, ask for feedback even when, even if you do get the grant. Because uh, oftentimes um, you'll still get some useful uh, details about what maybe some of the weaknesses were. And it's also nice to have it reinforced um, to hear what some of the strengths were in your project and application. Okay, some of the things you should not do. Uh, don't copy and paste your essays and just keep firing it in. Uh, even though there can be some copying and pasting, sometimes quite a bit, uh, you really should put in the effort to tailor your essays to every grant opportunity. Uh, don't start the application the day before it's due. That generally doesn't go well um, and leads to a lot of things being rushed and thrown together sloppily. Uh, this one's important. I guess these next two kind of together. Don't be surprised if you get rejected. You'll probably get rejected most of the time because most of these grant opportunities fund anywhere from like 1% to 20% of applicants. So the vast majority of people are getting rejected the vast majority of the time. And you probably won't be an exception to that. So uh, don't be surprised when that happens and don't take it personally. Look at it as an opportunity to learn more about what you can do to improve your project by talking to the funder and asking for feedback. Um, I highly recommend that you don't pay someone else to write your grant applications for a number of reasons uh, that's costly, but also no one is going to be able to speak more accurately and passionately about your project than you are. Uh, you can't outsource that to someone else. Uh, and the other key one is don't stop applying. Um, I've seen a lot of people give grant writing a go for three, six months they get four or five rejections and they're like, the hell with it, I'm not doing this anymore. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say besides uh, persistence pays off uh, when it comes to grant writing. And oftentimes you have to apply to the same funder maybe two, three, five times, uh, which is a pain, but uh, when you break through, it's very rewarding to, to get um, the funding and usually the rich get richer when it comes to grant writing. So if you get money from one funder, then another funder looks at that and says, oh, you got money from MacArthur, now we want to fund you. And it just tends to, to snowball. Okay, so going back to the um, kind of maybe surprising wording that I used in the, um, the opening slide, I'll talk a little bit about why I think of uh, this is grant building versus writing. So if you look at a typical grant application, the writing portions are something like this. There's an artist statement, a project description you have to write and your bio or the bios of uh, some collaborators too. Um, and that's definitely writing, like writing essays and so on. And that can be a substantial part of the application. 
but there's a whole other set of activities that you have to do when you put together a grant application. That's not just sitting, putting your head down, sitting at a computer and writing. Um, and I think it's a really a process of building or a different way to put it is um, you're essentially doing pre-production on your project. So this is work you should be doing anyway. So you have to build a detailed budget, a timeline. Uh, many funders want to see, or they like to see executed contracts and uh, letters of interest or intent from potential crew members. So instead of just saying, um, so-and-so wants to be a cinematographer in my project, attaching a letter from that cinematographer saying, I'm committed to this project, I agree to this rate, here's why I'm passionate about it, that's gonna help a lot more than you just dropping their name in the application. Um, another thing that's very helpful is getting quotes from vendors like Camera Ambassador, so that when you say in your budget that my camera package is gonna cost $30,000, the funder knows this is a real number based on a real quote. It's not just you sitting there making up numbers. Um, a proof of concept is often helpful, something you could shoot or uh, potentially repurpose from a past project. Um, work samples, uh, it takes time to build that and put it together. There are usually parameters around what, what you can submit as a work sample, how long of a work sample they'll look at. Uh, a business and financing plan is often required for film applications. So that's, that doesn't involve writing. That's a process of building something. Um, other letters of support, maybe from um, an executive producer or something like that. And then creating a pitch deck. Again, it's, there's some writing in there, but it's, that's, uh, I think of it as a building process. Uh, and you may have to hire a graphic designer and so on. So yeah, there's a lot more to doing grants than just writing is kind of what I'm getting at. Okay, so some common mistakes that I see in various elements. Um, I, I see a lot of distribution plans that are incredibly imprecise or totally implausible. Um, they're just really vague and lacking details. Clearly the person didn't think it through or it's totally implausible and it pretty much amounts to we're going to go to Sundance and sell the movie to A24 and um, uh, make a million dollars or whatever. So, so, yeah, I think it's worth uh, spending some time really thinking through the distribution plan carefully. Uh, I've seen a lot of really problematic budgets, and I think uh, a bad budget can easily tank your application. Um, a bad or poorly assembled budget is uh, unrealistic. So I've seen really ambitious films submit a budget that's like eighty thousand dollars. I would much rather see eight hundred thousand uh, dollars for that a budget for for something that's really ambitious. Um, yeah, so the budgets are sometimes too big or too small, and sometimes they're too narrow or too wide. So what I mean by that is. Um, like a fe feature film, for instance, you have to pay for development costs, production. There's also um, uh, all the post-production costs. Sometimes I got a budget for a film and it's as if the filmmaker forgot about the cost for post. So that it's only a budget for production um, or there's a budget for production and then just a single line for post. That's the unrealistic number. Uh, I also see a lot of, uh, from time to time, problems with work samples. So it's either not relevant to the project that you're submitting or people didn't follow the instructions. And a lot of times they'll say, we'll only look at five minutes and someone sends in a feature film. Um, take the time to read the instructions, extract the five minutes that you want them to watch, export it, upload it to Vimeo with a private link or however you want to do it and make sure that um, the work sample you submit is the appropriate length. Uh, I see a lot of mistakes in the project description where um, the description is not focused. It's very rambly. Uh, it's jargon laden. So there's a lot of um, kind of uh, phrases and terms of art that are used that the reviewer is not necessarily going to understand. Um, and then sometimes a poor description, project description will include really kind of flowery, big, empty language that isn't really getting at us the details of the project. And it's just sort of, um, yeah, 
lots of uh, kind of empty statements. So I, th I think a, pro a good project description is going to convey your passion for the um, the material or the project that you're doing, but it really should be specific uh, and substantive rather than big and empty. And then with timelines, yeah, same thing as with budgets. They're off, I often see ones that are really lacking in detail. Um, they're highly impractical and it makes me wonder like, has this person made a movie or do they know what they're getting into? Because they've only, they're doing a feature film and their timeline says uh, they're gonna do all post-production in four weeks. Um, so that can be a red flag. Or sometimes the timeline is too aggressive and doesn't line up with the funder's uh, timeline. So you should look at the funder's timeline. If they say that the application is due July 1st and they make decisions in September and then they release the funds in January, um, you probably should not submit a project timeline where you're starting to film uh, in October. That doesn't line up. Uh, and they're going to see that that's too aggressive and doesn't line up and probably uh, will result in your application um, being put into the no pile. Okay, a couple more slides. Um, one thing that a lot of people ask, I've heard this question at almost every single grant workshop I've ever attended is, is there a master grant list somewhere on the internet that will do all the work for me of researching the grant so I don't have to do that and I can just click on it and uh, apply? And the answer is no. There is no master grant list for a number of reasons. One is uh, there's grants are constantly changing. Grant programs <clears throat> fold, uh, organizations go out of business, new ones pop up. So it's a constantly shifting land landscape. And the other reason there's no master grant list is there are thousands and thousands of grants out there. And as I was reviewing earlier, the vast majority of the ones that might be relevant for your project are probably not film specific grants. They're probably not individual artist grants um, and are going to be uh, very specific to the topic of the project that you're doing. Um, so what might be relevant for you is not going to be relevant for the next person. So it's, it's like literally impossible to make a master grant list. Uh, it's going to be your job to customize your own list for every single project that you're doing. Uh, so then the obvious question is, how do I find out about these grants? And just to uh, emphasize the point, no, there's no master list somewhere. Um, so here's a couple of things you can do to find grants. Uh, one thing that's been very useful for me is carefully watch the end credits of every movie, maybe not the Hollywood movies that are being funded by studio, but um, independent films uh, that are comparable in ambition and scale and cost to what you're making. And funders uh, typically require the filmmakers to include their logos and acknowledgements um, at the end of the movie. So that can be like a directory basically at the end of the credits, like, oh, I see Panavision, uh, Sundance, blah, 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 they funded this and write those down. Um, sometimes, well, in the before times when I used to go to a movie theater, I would sit there and take out my phone and actually uh, record the credits as they're rolling. Because beyond um, funders, it, the end credits are a treasure trove of information. You find out about post houses, potential crew members. Um, so as a filmmaker, I encourage you to take out your phone and record the credits when they roll on the screen. You're going to get a lot of information, including who funded that movie. Um, and then you can extend that practice more widely. So every time you go to an art performance, uh, to a play, um, honestly, even to the public library, I did this the other day, there's a sign there, they have some event coming up. It's not an art event, it's at the public library. But they have a list of funders. I took a picture of that and I'm going to go Google all those funders and find out do they fund film or do they fund topics that are related to a film um, or a topic that one of my films is about. Uh, another thing you can do is ask funders. So when you get a grant, um, instead of just taking the money and running, as I was saying, you, you should start a conversation, a dialogue, and a relationship with that funder. And one of the things you could ask them is, hey, you guys like my movie and you funded it. Um, do you have any other peers in the funder space who might be interested? And oftentimes uh, funders will say, yeah, I know someone at MacArthur. Let me connect you to them. Uh, and so that's a great way to, to find out about more grants. 
Uh, another one, again, just ask filmmakers um, how they got their movies funded. Um, film and film organization websites. So what I'm talking about here is a lot of films, especially independent films, will have their own standalone website. And somewhere on that website, you will see logos of the funders. Uh, and so it's a good place to go. But it's also valuable to look at film organization websites because a lot of the funders who fund film nonprofits, such as uh, the one that I run, Full Spectrum Features, a lot of those funders and foundations, they not only fund organizations, but they fund film projects. Um, so that's another um, place to find out about grant opportunities or at least find funders who may have grant opportunities. Uh, this one's actually key, um, sign up for every newsletter and I'll, I'll give you a couple later that you should be signing up for. But of course there's the, um, the obvious ones like Sundance, uh, but there's many other organizations that have grants and you should uh, subscribe to all, all those newsletters and let them do the work of finding some of the grant opportunities and sending them to you. Uh, it's helpful to read all the trades. There's information about new grant funds and initiatives that start uh, variety deadline. And then locally there's Real Chicago and, and Screen Magazine. And then despite what I've been saying about there's no master list, there are useful lists online. So uh, I think that's important to note. And two, that you should Google are nofilmschool.com. They usually put out um, a couple of lists throughout the year of grant opportunities. And then there's a company called Studio Binder that has um, a pretty comprehensive list that's about a year old, but it's, I was looking through it this morning. Um, most of the grant opportunities are still relevant. So um, yeah, there are lists there uh, online, but I would not treat them as comprehensive or as like a master list, but as a starting point. Okay, so as I was saying, uh, here's a couple of the um, grants that I think you guys should be aware of. Um, I'm not gonna, again, this is not a master list. This is a list of, I think a short list that you should be aware of if you're a narrative filmmaker. Uh, the local ones are the city grant, the state grant, uh, Chicago Filmmakers has one that's called the uh, Digital Media Production Fund. It's up to $20,000. You should be aware of that one for sure. Um, OTV and Full Spectrum, and Chicago International all have different kinds of um, sort of fellowship programs that have a cash component to it. So you should look into those. And then uh, of course the camera ambassador grant is uh, one that you guys should all be aware of. I did put an asterisk on the D case one and the Illinois Arts Council one for a particular reason. And it's, um, they're relatively easy to get compared to certain other opportunities where maybe only 5% or less of the applicants are getting funded. Um, D case and Illinois Arts Council, I think, are somewhere around 25 to 40 percent uh, in any given year. So there's a much higher rate of uh, success with those. And then another interesting feature about those two grants is um, you can apply multiple times for the same project. Uh, so I, I've done this on both ends uh, or and seen this on both ends, both as a grant reviewer and as an applicant. So. How that works is, uh, say for the Illinois Arts Council, you can get $4,000 each time. So you can apply for $4,000 to do, um, say like the screenwriting for a project that you're doing. And then you can apply again for that same project for another $4,000 to pay for a production. And then when production is done, you can apply for another $4,000 for that very same film to do post-production. And then when that's done, you can apply for another $4,000 to uh, distribute the film. So over the course of that movie, you could have accrued $16,000 from one source. You will have to submit four different applications. Um, but that's, that's a, neat, a unique feature about both the DKS one and the Illinois Arts Council one. You, you can apply multiple times for the same project for different phases, though. So that's a key part. You can't apply for 4000 for production and then get another 4000 from production from the same funder. It has to be for a a different phase of the filmmaking process. Uh, and then, yeah, feel free to uh, take a snapshot or whatever. I think we might just email out this uh, slideshow later. 
Um, so no need to write this down, but here's a short list of uh, national funding opportunities. Some of these also include um, fellowships. Uh, the Panavision New Filmmakers Grant is actually an in-kind grant. So they give you like an ARIA Alexa package for a feature film that's probably valued at roughly like 50 grand. So there's no actual cash, but it's an in-kind package. Um, but these are kind of the main ones that I think you should be aware of um, that are na national funders. Uh, and then, yeah, I should also highlight the last two. Frameline is an LGBTQ film festival. They have a finishing funds grant. So that's for post only. It's up to 5,000. And then New Fit Fest, which I had mentioned earlier, is another um, LGBTQ festival. And I, I think it's with Netflix, I want to say that they partnered, or maybe it was Hulu. But in any case, it, yeah, it's a, a pretty significant five-figure cash grant from that one. Um, yeah, I'm quoting somebody. I wish I knew. <laughs> knew who it was. I went, uh, when I, right when I started Full Spectrum Features in 2015, I went to a grant writing workshop at the Chicago Artist Coalition. And I don't remember anything from that really, except this one quote, and it's really stuck with me. And there was a woman who was on the panel and she said something along these lines, if you want to be a professional artist, you have to become a professional grant writer. And uh, I don't know why that stuck with me, but um, it, it, it really got me thinking differently about grants, not as some annoying side project that I need to do in order to fund the thing that I really want to do. But I started thinking of grant writing as part of the job of being a professional filmmaker. And that shift in mindset is really crucial because now I'm not trying to outsource it or get someone else to do it or find some shortcut by finding a master list. I'm putting the time and attention into grant writing that it deserves in, this, in the same way that you wouldn't take shortcuts in making your film. If grant writing is part of your job, um, you shouldn't look for shortcuts. You, you should look at, figure out how to do it well and, and put in the time that it deserves. Thank you so much, uh, Eugene, for coming in today and talking with us and spending your time and giving us such a, a thorough presentation and also being able to field all these questions, kind of go and re over some information. Um, and elaborate on some other things. Thank you again. Hope to see your applications. And uh, if you want to go far, go together. Uh, hope to see you around Chicago. Y'all have a great day.